food waste and food loss are two concepts that are closely linked. Food loss is everything that is lost between the time the product is taken from the ground, from the field, until it reaches basically the supermarkets. We have come up with uh, estimates in the year 2019. What we have at that moment is about 14% is lost. On the other hand, we have food waste. Food waste is something that is much closer to every day's consumer's life. And that's basically everything that is gone bad, not consumed, from the moment that it reaches the retailer, what is in the food industry, and of course, and that's a very important part, what is in our households. Between the two numbers, we reach something of a third, and newer estimates talk even of up to 40% of the global production. We could feed 1.2 billion people with what we lose there. And in today's world, we have about 811 million people who are food insecure, who go hungry to bed. And in addition to that, we have about 3 billion people who cannot afford the simplest healthy diet to eat. We can safely say that um, food waste is responsible for 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Yet knowing this, there are only 6%, less than 6% of all countries across the world that take up food loss and waste into their carbon reduction plan. Reducing food waste is actually the number one solution to fight climate change. Number one solution in terms of immediate effectiveness and uh, actionability. When you look at food waste, whether it, it is because food is left to rot on a field or because it is uh, dumped on a landfill, um, food emits methane gases. And methane gases are 30 times more potent than CO2, right? So they're much more damaging. On the other hand, it takes uh, on average 10 years to take methane out of the atmosphere, but it takes anywhere between 100 and 300 years to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. So you have the opportunity to reduce the effect of global warming by reducing methane gases is enormous. If we were to reduce methane gases by 40 to 45% within the next 10 years, we would reduce the effects of global warming by 0.3%. Food Drink Europe, um, on behalf of its members, is very involved in the platform, the EU platform on food losses and food waste. This platform will have its mandate renewed next year, 2022, and of course our commitment will continue uh, over time to that platform, which is very important. I think it's important to highlight the work uh, on the Code of Conduct. So the Code of Conduct is part of the European Union's Farm to Fork strategy. Food Drink Europe and its members were very involved in the Code of Conduct, which is um, a list of commitments that companies across the industry are taking and other players across the food chain are taking uh, in order to do things more sustainably. So the food and drink industry plays an important role. One of the aspects would be how to promote the selling of products that are coming close to their shelf life with a dynamic pricing system. So again, we want um, food waste to become more of a, an issue that people are aware of, right? And the impact that it has on climate change. That goes through more sustainable buying patterns. It goes through uh, cooking with leftovers. Um, it goes through being aware of the significance of um, use by dates and best before dates on products and knowing that a best before product is perfectly safe to consume after its date. At FAO, we have identified fruits and vegetables, foods that are in bakeries as elements that are closer and have a shorter cycle and therefore it is more important to raise awareness to the importance of having these products sold in a dynamic pricing system for example. Now the role that uh, the food and drink industry could play is in donations to surplus food banks because if you donate the surplus food on time and in a manner that is well regulated and in a manner that is transparent, the value of these surplus foods will continue to be highly appreciated by these food banks and it will reach people that are in need of it. Uh, we know that some countries have already established very clear rules on that. France and Italy come to mind, they have laws for this. We know that other countries are also working on establishing very clear guidelines for these donations to food banks. 
and it's a, it's a joint effort that definitely pays off quite well.